So I kind of started beginning this little sketch. Hello, hello everyone, hello. I began the little sketching of um, the Bridget Bardot outline. Hello, hello everyone, thank you, thank you. Um, so yeah, I'm sketching the Bridget Bardot picture that I mentioned on my community tab. Um, I'm gonna do it in pen, in red pen, because it was the closest pen that I could find. And it was also the only one that I could find near me that was working. So I think I'm usually good with pen sketches, not terrible at least. So we'll see how this goes. However, with that being said, thank you, thank you. I'll, it's kind of fun just to kind of have like a, a conversation to start. It's kind of fun starting on a new channel, but I think I might, I'm gonna keep making daily videos on this channel um, but I think I might start making like perhaps weekly content on my main channel, my old channel, just because this is technically my main, this is my main channel. My old channel is my old channel. Um, just cause it's like, I don't know, watching it just kind of like sit there kind of makes my heart ache. I'm like, oh, it's my old channel. But at the same time, I'm like, the consistency will be on this one. And then my little side, like, mental projects are definitely on my third channel. Let's see. Did you private the video where you teach SpongeBob in German? I always love... No, I didn't. YouTube took that one from me. YouTube takes so many of my favorite videos. And I'm like, come on. Um, let's see. We love the videos regardless where they are. Oh, thank you. Let's see. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to keep drawing. Um, Con ese canal, te conocimos la mayoría. I know. It's been like so long on that channel. It's just that I think for me, mostly when I kind of like got into my faith, um, I would see random jokes that I made pop up in like random videos that I could never even predict. Like if it was just videos where I had titled them something blasphemous, I would have been like, okay, well, those are the videos that I have to be concerned about that kind of like make me feel bad. Even though now I'm kind of like more confident in my faith. So I'm a little bit over that sort of like initial sort of like, what have I done phase? Um, but because I couldn't tell which videos were the ones that I was like blasphemous in, it kind of like plagued me a little bit and it made me feel awful but then i kind of became more confident in my faith and i was like oh it doesn't make me feel that bad anymore it's kind of like my process or my history essentially it's not my first live stream no i think i've done i've done twitch before um did you private the one of prince philip i did i forgot why i did that one i might bring it back there's a couple that i'm still looking at kind of like side-eyeing it's a little bit of a process for me it's kind of like when you have like a complete although it's not like a complete but it's like when your viewpoint basically shifts between the mirror kind of like the transition wasn't necessarily like one pendulum swing to the opposite side it's more so like alice going through the looking glass or alice going through like a, a mirrored wall essentially where it's like you don't necessarily pendulum swing you basically kind of like step over here kind of like reflect yourself back and realize that all of the answers that were you were looking for are reflected here if that makes any sense so it's just kind of like an easy transition however having to look back on that past makes you kind of like gravitate away from that reality just because you don't like that being like something that you've ever done or said, but at the same time, it's real. Like it's actually just like human, it's progress essentially. So I might bring them back. There's a couple of them where I'm like, I'm never bringing those back, but there's a couple where I'm like, my brain is still kind of like adjusting. It's still adapting. Let's see, let's see. Oh, that's a lot. 
Oh, that's a lot. Uh, let's see. Mm, did you private the one? Da, da, da. Are you able? Are you able Orthodox Christian? I do attend Divine Liturgy a couple of times. Um, I like learning about Orthodoxy a lot. Um, I was gonna start taking classes, um, but it's just I bounce around so much that to consistently stay in one spot is something that I still need to kind of like build out. I said, I guess. Um, that being said, I like going from church to church and studying with different Bible students and collecting their phone numbers and becoming friends with them and like having them kind of keep me up to date with what they're learning. So that way I can kind of like piece together things as well and kind of like build like my knowledge and whatnot. I do love orthodoxy though. It gives me a great sense of peace. Um, yeah. Let's see. The one where you were a boob surgeon was one of my faves. I th there's two of those, I think. One of them is public. The other one I had to private just because like after YouTube got mad at me, although I'm pretty sure it wasn't YouTube, just YouTube. Um, because of, that's technicality. Anyways, um, I kind of got paranoid and I was like, okay, well, which content is going to just randomly um start affecting my channel because it's one thing if it affects my channel it's another thing if it risks my channel I'm like those are memories like it's not just like it's not just the videos those are my memories like those are that those are like basically my home videos like I don't want them all to disappear just because of like some technicality where I'm like no don't take away my my this is my life this is my time that I spent here why you swap channels anyway? Because of the amount of people that it reaches. Um, yeah, I only swap channels for two reasons. Um, the first one is that my conscience was severely hurting me with my first channel. Um, just because I was like basically freshly understanding my faith and what the ways that I criticized and argued about against the faith, it hurt my brain it really just like irritated me um, mostly because it just felt like I had, I kept looking at my past as if it was a mistake as opposed to a process and I couldn't get over it. I felt like I was super judgmental of myself. Um, and number two, I can't make consistent content on my main channel if it's like, completely demonetized like I can make content on there and I'm planning on starting it again on a hopefully weekly basis um just for the fun of it but daily content that's I tried doing it for a couple of months it's just not sustainable it'll it'll burn me out so that's why I moved over here where it's like okay well I'll start a new over here and then I'll start dropping videos on the main channel just for the funsies of it um wacky ideas once again but not too wacky where then YouTube will get mad um, and yeah, that's kind of like the way I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like processing it. Are you doing anything for Halloween? I'm trying to figure out that balance. Like I see Halloween as like, like as Anton LaVey said, like Anton LaVey recognizes Halloween as being a, like a satanic holiday. Um, and it is cause it's rooted in like basically trying to appease the, the spirits from mischievously attacking the townspeople. But consequently, that history is fascinating to me. That like reality is interesting to me because it is it's like there. Like that's that's the history of it. So I'm I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna do that basically. Where I'm like, I'm not celebrating it, nor do I want to celebrate it, but I'm also acknowledging the history and the reality of it, the the lore to it essentially, the education of it essentially. Um Will you be saving the stream? I can't watch it right now. Yeah, this stream will be saved on the live tab on YouTube. Let's see. Blasphemy is always fun. Bro, when you watch Passion of the Christ and you cry over Christ's sacrifice, blasphemy hurts your brain. Like, it hurts so bad. I can't do it. Like, I just, I can't. Like, if someone else blasphemes, I just kind of go, e. but it doesn't like, 
oftentimes I can kind of understand to what level of like understanding do they know or even care like are you blaspheming in a spirit Halloween way or are you blaspheming in a like you are going to sacrifice a chicken afterwards way and I'm like I can kind of like discern that but either way I'm just kind of like you might struggle with that if you ever do find Christ and if you don't your life will be a struggle. Let's see. Oh, this is so sweet. I'm so glad I've helped you guys when it comes to like your sleeping problems and like, you know, good times in your life. Next to me. Okay. Oh, my thingy got frozen. The chat got frozen for me. I don't know if the, did the video freeze for a second? I think so. Let's see. Urgh. Oh God, now where did I leave off in the chat? The thing froze. Let's see, let's see, ooh. Alt Stuff TV. I like the Saturns. I was actually listening. I'm getting into like the whole lore around Saturn. Um, I was listening to some Saturn sounds, a 10 hour video on Saturn sounds while I was reading Rosemary's Baby and it was a vibe. I'm like interested in set. Like there's a lot of like lore when it comes to the planets that I'm like getting into. Let's see. Oh, how low did I go? Let's see. Oh, I think I found it. I think I left off. Okay, here we go. Hi, do you have more specific specificity on the particular kind of grass Angelica, Angelica's grass is or the inspiration for the name? I'm totally curious. Um, the name actually came from the fact that it's kind of like a play on Angelica's Labyrinth where Angelica's Labyrinth was basically a reflection of how I saw my mind as like a maze that was basically like this never ending loop-de-loop -loop of just constant like wandering, but never really reaching an end. And then each wall that I would hit would be like the dead end essentially, but it was never like, I never found anything. It was just like constant wandering. Angelica's grass is more like I've touched grass. It's more like a, I've exited the maze, I've left it. And now I'm like in reality essentially. So that was the, the thought process behind it. Are you Christian or Catholic? Well, I can't technically say that I'm Catholic just because I haven't been fully initiated into the faith. Um, but I attend Catholic Mass and Divine Liturgy. I lean towards Catholic Mass for cultural reasons, but also because there's something about Catholicism that's just so... There's something about both Orthodoxy and Catholicism that just attract me so much that I just can't... I'm a little bit divided on that, that it makes me kind of like insecure because I'm still fractured between the two. Where Orthodoxy has like for me personally, like it has a lot of the traditional elements of it and also the sense of humility, the sense of like, the sense of like con the deep push towards asceticism and like all of these different ideas. It gives me a sense of like deep peace and it makes me feel more at home, but Catholicism makes me understand more which is kind of interesting considering how like there was a movement. Um, the reason that Dostoevsky didn't like Catholicism is because, and a lot of people in Russia didn't like Catholicism was because they said that Catholicism was being basically invaded by a bunch of intellectuals who were going to basically hyper emphasize or prioritize the intellectual pursuits over the faith, which I still, I forgot what it was called. It was like the it was like there was a movement around, but it was in, a movement named in Russian, so I can't quite think of the word off the top of my head. But it was something like Petrov, Petroverse, something Petroverse Dickin or something like that. Um, but yeah, I can't really say that I'm like I lean towards Catholicism, but I still can't say that I'm Catholic because I haven't been like fully initiated yet. Let's see. Would you say that your politics changed alongside with your faith enough for you to also no longer openly refer to yourself as left wing? Um, I've taken, for as much as it's worth, I've taken the political compass test and I've assessed my political beliefs. 
I still get left wing. Like I'm still on the left, but my politics honestly didn't change very much. Honestly, if anything, Christianity helped me soften up, um, but it didn't really affect my politics at all. In fact, it gave me the, the sense of understanding and the space I needed in order to finally feel like my values are acknowledged. Um, so yeah, I think by virtue of just believing that people who need help in society, I think by being someone who's collectively minded and who believes in the idea of charity, you're automatically going to become left wing. Um, but yeah, it's like left wing politics is basically people who are more governed by emotion by empathy. Right-wing politics is more people who are governed by the head. And I'm kind of stuck between the two. Breaking bread with the Spanish commie was really one of my faves. That honestly, aesthetically, is probably one of my favorite vi videos. It's the one with hypnosis to feel death among them. Is the one to fuel hypnosis death among them? Oh, that one. Yeah, those have to remain privated for specific reasons. Do you go to a church? Yes, I do. I bounce around from churches, which is a naughty habit, but it's also kind of necessary. I've been, like, I would attend, I think the, the most that I've done sequentially at one church is like, I've attended six masses, but then I have to move to another church and then I'll do like four and then I have to move to another church and then I'll just attend that way. Girl, you got to teach me Spanish. I can teach you Arabic and German in return. I'm surprised that if you know Arabic and German, you wouldn't know Spanish. I'm like, Arabic has to be so complicated to learn. I feel like I would be, you would be doing me more of a service than I would be able to do for you. You have helped my mental health so much and I hope someone understands. Oh, thank you. That's so sweet of you. Uh, let's see. I've been out of the loop on everything that you went through in the past two to three years, but remain an avid fan of your work. Some people are too obsessive and desperate about your religious beliefs. I can understand why they're obsessive, just because obviously if you're a public figure, or if you're someone who's like platformed, you're automatically going to be on a platform. Like you're going to be on like a pedestal or whatever. I myself have always like understood that human beings are a fallible b autonomous c like individuals so i think when people get really upset or they collectively start to kind of i don't know get angry or whatever i'm like what in your brain deified a human being to such a point in which you believed that they you somehow had this maker relationship with them essentially like for example i love the beatles but right now i just can't stand listening to them because i know a lot of details about them that annoy me but i would never like be so obtuse to think that they don't have the right to govern their lives i just have to accept do i really want to listen to them right now no if i do i'll probably listen to their solo careers individually just to kind of like cope but yeah did you ever go to university and study drama or communications like before YouTube? No. Uh, when I went to university, I studied, I triple majored just because when you're, when you're raised in like an economically dire situation, um, you try to like squeeze every single cent that you spend out of anything. So I studied a bunch of things. Loki, the most consistent YouTube content creator. Oh, thank you. You gotta read Carl Jung. I've been getting into him. Slowly though, slowly. Cause like his stuff is like really, the deeper you go into his stuff, it gets really dense. Especially since he uses so much like spiritual knowledge. Um, or he co-ops it kind of. Cause like it, it gets watered down. Um, but yeah, it's like his, his work definitely is probably gonna like pop a level of understanding that I, I currently am building to another level that I'll be able to better understand. 
can we expect more Christian themed ASMRs, prayers, role plays, scriptures? Yes. I don't think I'd ever do a Christian prayer ASMR just because I don't know how I feel about that yet. Um, once I kind of like figure out that it's like we're in the clear, I'm okay with it, then it'll be good. But I don't know. I just, I don't know how I feel about that one just yet. Role plays, yeah. Um, and then scriptures, yes. Yeah. I'm planning on making one where um, I break down like my favorite books and why they're my favorite books and then read passages from it, basically. Let's see. Have you ever read, watched Watchmen? And if so, what do you think of the morality politics of it? I think my mom liked Watchmen. I ignored it mostly because I I just mistook it as yet another superhero movie. And I was like, I'm not into superhero movies. Like I don't like them except for like the original Spider-Man, the original Hulk and well, not the original one, like the, well, yeah. Like I like the, I think it was from the 19th. No, it couldn't be the 1960s. It must've been the 1980s and 90s. I like that version of the cartoon Spider-Man and the early like Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. I like the, what's his face? Eric Bana, I think was his name. The Scottish Hulk from like the early 2000s. But with all of like the huge saturation in the superhero market, it, it annoys me deeply. Oh, so much. How did you find your new faith? Did you go to church by yourself or did you have others go with I want to go to a Catholic church in my town, but I'm nervous to go alone. I just went alone. Like no one really initiated me. No one talked to me. No one, like, there was no one who brought me there. I was kind of like uncomfortable going actually. Like I still didn't believe in God when I started going to church. Um, I kind of just observed the secular value of the Catholic church and church in general. And I just thought, okay, well, even if God doesn't exist, it seem, this seems like the crowd to be in and the politics in it, in it also because like the Catholic Church has their own economic model where they reject both capitalism and communism preferring a more um, their economic model like charity sounds like a bad word to communists because it basically is of the voluntary will of those that are already economically privileged so it doesn't guarantee people their needs However, in a state-run society, the resources are going to be locked up in the bureaucratic gridlock, and those at the very top are going to receive all the funds. So in its consequences are worse, which is difficult for communists to believe, but tangibly speaking, historically speaking, their consequences are worse because it's still like every single minute detail is under control. Meanwhile, with the Catholic model, it's like there's still a level of social welfare that they emphasize and they encourage for the sake of like your faith, which is what motivates you to do that. And also based off your faith, you're kind of like, even if you don't want to do it, you're kind of guilted into socially helping others. So I'm like, this is the proper way to go about it. You're not going to be like, punished in like a statist way but you're going to be feeling wrong about it because you morally know that it's wrong to not help essentially but let's see um so yeah I kind of went for the secular definitions of it but then I developed a faith in God consequently um and like everything else kind of followed suit afterwards let's see Hold up, I think an ad, an ad play. At least YouTube just warned me that an ad is gonna play. So I'm gonna sketch for a little while until maybe YouTube tells me that the ads are gone. But actually I could just, I wanted to sketch, but I can't do both cause I'm looking at questions and I'm also gotta look down for the picture. I'm gonna do a little bit by little bit and then we'll see how in these little bit chunks how well it turns out. Um, so are you still figuring out whether you are going to be Orthodox or Catholic or are you Catholic? I'm still figuring out 
between the two of them, basically. But I'm, it's like, my faith will probably lean in those directions, but it's like, I'm still kind of like figuring out the, the wider definition of Christianity because perhaps I need to read more Catholic and Orthodox literature. I do. I do. But there's like a full breadth of Christianity, including like the way that early Christians defined heresies and how they kind of like pushed them out of society and like the whole process of it and how it came to be Catholicism and how it came to be the whole schism and all of that jazz. All of that fascinates me. Like the or origins, everything, like it all fascinates me. But I'm kind of figuring it out on my own. And I feel like if I start to subscribe to the more like routine, traditional like steps, um, which I still go to mass, but if I start to kind of like go down a more organized schedule route, I think it might trigger some like Jehovah Witness programming inside my brain. That'll make me focus more so on the dogma than on the history of it and on the exploratory curious elements of it that really pique my interest and how it like interacts with other dimensions of reality whether it be historically or spiritually or like in different zones essentially let's see have i been to france no, I haven't been to France. For some reason, I wanted to say yes to that question, but I'm like, I haven't been to France. What are some of your favorite books? Um, there's a lot of books that like have deepened my perspective on the world that I'm appreciative towards, but honestly, like my favorite books are still always gonna nostalgically be the series of unfortunate events um and probably Jane Eyre those are probably going to always be like my my comfort books I suppose uh, thoughts on Ted K now YouTube doesn't like <laughs> listen he had some good points what can I say was did he go too far yes and that's why he's in a box now that's why he was cremated and put in a box in the middle of like a blank walls roomed i have no idea how worse of a punishment that could possibly be for a man who wanted to live his life in nature it, to be imprisoned in solitary confinement within industrial in, within mortar walls or whatever and then to be cremated and put into a box inside of a room that is probably windowless. He got his car, like he got his just desserts. But was his social criticism like accurate? Yeah, to an extent, honestly. Have you ever thought of the joys of nihilism? I did when I was, oh wait, did it freeze? Did it freeze? It froze. It froze, yeah. Are we back? Oh, did the chat go all the way down to the bottom? It did. Now I have to go back up and look for where I left off. Let's see. Let's see how high I have to go. Da, 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 da. There's so much. Oh god. Okay, wait. Oh. I'll just drop somewhere random. Okay.
do you believe that most, if not all, religions are based on astrology and numerology? Mm, no. I can kind of see where you're coming from, though. But at the current moment, no. But I do want to see more of that perspective and then see how I can kind of like transcend that perspective. Let's see. Are you an avid Kanye enthusiast? <laughs> he made graduation. <laughs> Like, he, he watched, guys, he watched 21 Jump Street. Like, he was made a new man. Is the word in Russian Pikachu? I don't know what that is. Oh, I know what that was. Okay, I know what that was a reference to. Yeah. Let's see. Just a question. What is your ethnicity? If in the words of Charles Manson, I, I'm a whole body. I'm Hispanic. Let's see. Who's your favorite singer? Uh, maybe Enya or Fiona Apple. Maybe. What's your most controversial opinion? That... <laughs> wait for it wait for it god exists and that his law should be observed that's my most controversial opinion i feel like that effectively is my most and it's through the christian faith that i think objectively that is like probably the most con globally speaking i feel like that is the most controversial opinion that you can have I'm, serious inter I'm seriously interested in how did you come about Catholicism? I consider myself a feminist and Catholic, so maybe we have similar experiences regarding conflicting politics and faith. Wait a minute. I kind of blinked out for a second. How did you come about Catholicism? I consider myself a feminist and Catholic, so maybe we have similar experiences. I think that, honestly, Catholicism and feminism, in a way, in an angle, like, those who know, know, but in an angle, it's like, you know that it works together. Mostly when it comes to instances like domestic, like, a, I'm trying to like censor myself for the sake of YouTube because you never know what'll bother them. You, you, you never know what's gonna bother them. You can't even use certain words that you think is completely fine without them getting upset over it. No offense, YouTube, we love you. Um, but like D, DV, SA, group, stuff like that. Um, that all is like what you would think is feminist, like think is like a feminist, Point to kind of like tackle back at those who are like more red pilled within Christian spheres, where they basically think that their own like machismo or their own like debauchery or their own like masculine like degeneracy is somehow like condoned by Christianity when it actively goes against those inclinations. So then obviously, which is also referenced in, I don't know if I'm reading it wrong, I have to like do my notes and I'm going to make a video on it. But um, what's her face? She's a Catholic writer. It's Grace, Al it's Alice Vaughn something. I can't quite remember. But she ended up saying how when men fail, women then have to be pushed towards the forefront to basically compensate where men fail and take on their tasks. So likewise, I think feminism in some ways is a reaction towards men failing and then women having to take on those roles to try and like, keep the peace in society or to keep the members within society safe and protected where feminism goes way wrong is when it condemns femininity when it condemns womanhood and subsequently when it starts to praise elements of womanhood that are just degenerate to one's body that's when i'm like no i have criticism of this objectively this is just like harmful you can pretend it's not but the consequences are still going to be very visible on your psyche and on your life so how did you come about Catholicism? The Virgin Mary. Like, there's a lot of, like, praised women within Catholicism that are oftentimes suppressed and silenced in Protestantism. That when you observe how 
the Virgin Mary is so respected and cared for, it automatically makes you understand like, and also Mary Magdalene, it's like, it makes you understand like in feminism, there's the whole dynamic of like the spinster, the virgin, the whore, um, the spinster, virgin, whore, and the crone. Um, within Catholicism, in the secular definition, all four of those are condemned by feminists. And it's like, you have to abolish these concepts. You have to abolish these constructs. Like you can fit in all of these, cat you don't fit in all of these, cat we're, we're demented, like we can fit out whatever. In Catholicism, all of these qualities are praised. Like whichever one you fall into, whether it's Mary Magdalene, Virgin Mary, um, Naomi from um, Ruth and, Na or rather, yeah, Ruth and Naomi. Naomi, Boaz, Ruth, yeah, Ruth and Naomi. Um, spinster all of these qualities are praised christian socialism i have my criticisms i have my criticisms have you picked a denomination i'm still torn between the two are you interested in omnism i think people need to pass through omnism perhaps like atheist or agnostics or anyone they kind of have to go through a period of omnism to kind of like even be interested at all in the idea that there's a spiritual realm that exists particularly in this more and more secularized society where we've completely lost touch with any sense of god if we even had any in order to kind of like value the spiritual realm at all and then to deepen your understanding of each faith you realize you can't possibly hold an ominous view because if you hold an ominous view, it's basically like 101 for spirituality. And number two, it reflects a level of like ignorance within the interplay of each religion and how they already have like a relationship with one another and their value system according to each other. Thoughts on what happened with Ephemeral Rift? He's been on YouTube for I think like 10 years. This man has been the same for 10 years. Like, I feel like people who watch ASM artists or YouTube ch channels in general, but especially ASM artists, because all of us that are like, quote unquote, OG, we were a very small, 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 small community in the corner of just nowhere for a while on YouTube that just enjoyed being funny and goofy. And like, we all observed how everyone had their own kind of like quote unquote condition we all observed that we all had our own like ex we were real people essentially real people who were gravitating towards this niche market because not even market it was just like a niche community because we liked relaxing essentially and that's what made us like it in the first place then it blew up to such a degree where then all the popular kids all the like all the people who wanted like attention all the people who wanted like you know to jump in or whatever then they got into it and now they're surprised that there's so many people within the community that have complexes or that are real people or that are going to show signs of being like a human being and i'm like i think with ephemeral rift if i'm not mistaken if i'm not wrong this is just my observation from the outset i think he might just be establishing his autonomy as a human being and his dissatisfaction with how marketed ASMR is now, with how superficial and how like characterized, caricaturized ASMR has become, where it's become like a profitable business, as opposed to like a real tender community that was just like authentic. That's my own observation. That's my own opinion. So that's kind of like my my two thoughts on him. My eyes. I believe I have an understanding of what caused you to want to turn to faith, but what reasoning, if any, do you have in God over the lack of him? Right now in my book club, we're reading the five uh, proofs for God's existence, the five logical proofs for God's existence by Edward Fesser, which goes through the Aristotelian, the Neoplatonic, the um, Thomas Aquinas. It goes through all of these different philosophical ways of proving that God exists. Um... For me, the reason for why he exists is that it's kind of like the quote by Albert Camus, when you go to the extremes of experience, you kind of find truth there. So I've gone to, I was raised in an extreme and then I went to different extremes 
that when you collect them all together, it reflects truths that are present within the Bible that were already predicted within the Bible. And then, yeah, when you observe the Bible and you start to understand how predictable everything becomes, at first I didn't believe in God just because I was like, well, it's just like a collective body of knowledge that just somehow synthesized into one book. But by virtue of the nature of evil, as Arist like we covered this today, as Aristotle states, it's like there's the, if I can explain it well enough, um, there's the actualized object, I think, and then there's the actualizer. And if there's something that's damaged, there's like a privation of the object. So essentially, if you know that there is an ideal and something falls short of that ideal, then you know how that ideal was damaged. So evil or negative actions are essentially defined by, or they're acknowledged as being evil or negative by the virtue of us understanding that there is an ideal that exists. And God is that concept of idealism. Um, and although he might be an idea through a secular lens, when you understand the nature of the spirit and how it nourishes the soul and how that's what really motivates you to keep going and kind of gives you that life, you start to piece everything together. I think the best way that I can explain it, even though I feel like I'm not being clear, is like how the world is basically made out of stardust. And in the Bible, it says from dust, you've come and to dust, you shall return because at the end of the day, it's what we are. Um, but when the Bible says to dust, you shall return from dust, you come from. If you extrapolate that all the way back to stardust, then you start to understand that the Bible is reflecting truths that people of that time didn't even acknowledge or understand. And it's like kind of like we're now in this point where we've learned so much collectively that we now have a deeper understanding of what the Bible meant in the first place. If that at all makes any sense. I'm having difficulty kind of like putting my thoughts into words just because I haven't fully like processed it all yet. Let's see. Have you seen the movie Stalker by Andrei Tarvosky? I have not, but I'm going to note it down because I like him. Okay. What's the, what's the, what's the, what's the, what's your favorite type of music? Um, classic rock. Um, it's almost scary to hear her talk in normal level voice and speed. Oh, that's weird. Who's your favorite author? Probably Donna Tartt, because she popped to mind first. Um, since there's so many video backgrounds in a lot of your videos, does each room have a different theme? No. I just, if I, if I see a background that I like or that I think is pretty, I'm like, it must be done. A video must be made here. Human body soaring Kierkegaard's three stages of existentialism. I know. <laughs> I was like, I remember when I first read Kierkegaard, I was like, oh, that's interesting. That's such a, like, it, it was just like, oh, wow. Like you lose your faith and then you have to like basically prove it to yourself again to return in order to have a true and concrete faith. Where it's like people who were born and raised Christian oftentimes are the ones that are slowly ebbing away from their faith or they tend to take on a more Pharisee mindset where it's like, they, they kind of like hide themselves away from the world and they don't participate in the world and they have difficulty even engaging with the world. But, which is like, when I say Pharisee, I don't say that in like a condemning judgmental tone. It's just kind of like what is characteristic of it. But at the same time, I also understand because the world is a very scary place. And so if you are raised in a, in a way where it's like you were able to kind of maintain that level of like ignorance, where ignorance is bliss, then you want to kind of preserve that, which is understandable. Um, but for the Christians who kind of like leave it, 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 in both cases, it's like their faith is reflective of a lack of understanding and a lack of like truly committing to their faith. Because for those that are scared of it, if they go anywhere near the world, they're scared that they're going to be either harmed because of their faith, which might be accurate, or they're afraid that they might lose their faith when confronted with like, you know, spiritual attacks or whatever. And as for the Christians who wander away, they don't truly see the value in their faith because they think that outside elements might hold more truth than their own faith do. Meanwhile, those who kind of undergo that entire process have probably like a stronger, 
a, a stronger reasoned faith via experience and also via learning it again, essentially. What is your favorite Halloween themed movie? Probably Suspiria. It's just like a horror movie. I don't know if like any horror movie could just be considered a Halloween themed movie. If like it has to be specifically Halloween, probably Halloween Town from Disney. Let's see, let's see. You have a very abstract mind and approach to ASMR. Do you think there is a genuine reason for this or is that just how you happen to be? I feel like I just make normal content. <laughs> I feel like I'm just like, <laughs> am I not normal? If you was an actor, what movie will you fit your personality? I feel like anything that Ava Green does, I would want to do. Um, everything that, uh, what's her face did? Wazikowski. What was her first name? Mia Wazikowski. I would want to do. I like to close her a lot. Um, so yeah. Let's see. She sounds like Grimes, but without lisp. We were all programmed in the, sim in the same way. Technologically. Listening to the same types. Do you still see yourself doing ASMR consistently in the next few years? Probably. Like, I don't know what's going to happen in the next few years, but... I like doing videos, so I don't know if I'll ever stop liking doing videos. How'd you create comedic perspectives for your characters without going too far? I think you find a good balance and I never find them mean-spirited even when the topics are controversial. I honestly don't know. I just am the way I am. Would you like to be married someday? It depends on the marriage. But I imagine if it's a good marriage, then of course I would want to have one, but if it's a bad marriage, I'll stay single. Let's see, let's see. Oh my God, why would it jump? It jumped. What made you not decide Protestant? Um, I was raised Protestant and I noticed that each Protestant church had their own brand of politics, which was understandable, but it also was just so superficial and limited that it turned me off from Protestantism in general. Let's see. Did it freeze again? I think it froze. I'm going to start doodling again. Are we back? Yeah, I think we're back. I'm going to doodle a little bit just to see if I can finish this doodle. And as quickly, this is gonna be a speed doodle too. I'm gonna to see if I can impress myself or if I don't impress myself, I'm just not gonna show it. And I'm just gonna be like, I didn't draw anything at all. Anything at all worth showing. Let's see. We're gonna doodle. And this doodle is gonna be, oh God, no. Okay, okay, oh no. Oh no, we're already messing up. Why are we already messing up? Why? Okay. Oh God, there's so much. Okay, I'm just gonna from here. Um, do you ever listen to Christian podcasts, Stone Choir? No. What would you say to young women and men who are struggling to follow God in the modern nihilistic environments of today's world? Um, keep in mind, 
the idea of lost souls, mostly because a lot of people are ghost-like in the world. That's why there's a lot of like self-deprecating humor that's going around commonly, where people are just very ghost, like they have no convictions. That's why they're like, oh, everyone, different structure, different folks, everyone just do whatever you want. Like they're very like phantasmic when it comes to approaching life. Like they're just drifting. They're just like going with the flow because they're just a ghost basically. So the idea of taking the words of a ghost seriously to a point where it would affect your existence as if you would want their life in return is perhaps a perspective that you can kind of push against by having more confidence in what you believe in by deepening your understanding of your beliefs and understanding that what you believe in is not harmful, it's not unhealthy, it's not wrong. It's actually quite medicinal and it's proven to save a lot of people's lives. In fact, there are a lot of like people who were either in gangs or who did like lewd content, but like severely lewd content, as in like they were trapped inside of an industry that have turned to Christianity and it saved their life literally because a lot of their peers did not make it. So when you keep that perspective in mind, put respect on your faith, put respect on your beliefs, because that literally has probably saved your parents, if not the people who know your parents, people your parents' age, people your age. It's, it gives people hope, essentially. In fact, that was one of the things that deeply annoyed me about the world, where I was like, really, you can't even suggest someone turn to Christianity when they're going through a hard time? Like, that's seen as a negative. You have to tell them, oh, my God, no, just, you know, go to a support group. You know, just go to, like, you know, just, like, treat yourself, queen. But you're not supposed to tell them, yeah, I mean, like, maybe you should go to church. Like, maybe that might help you. The community there is actually free. And, like, you might actually gain people who genuinely, from their heart, want to give you a home and give you comfort and give you, like, a new family. And obviously don't go to a, a sect because then you'll just disappear from the world, which could have its benefits for people who are actively looking to disappear from the world. But if you are kind of like not wanting to like completely lose touch with who you are and where you are, then perhaps just join an established religion. But yeah, I'm like, there's really objectively having fully gone to those extremes at to as much of an extreme as possible without being completely like, immoral essentially yeah there's like nothing to defend there like it's literally death to the soul let's see Do you have a so bad it's good movie that you see as a masterpiece? I know I do. I know I do. I know I do. So many. So bad is good. I don't know. I feel like this is going to be like controversial because like I'm a little bit of like an insufferable cinephile where I've like I'm obsessed with movies. It's like a love language for me. I think maybe Pink Panther 2 but it's, that's good. It's just, I don't know if it's so, it's just, there's people who criticize it and they're like, it's crap, but I'm like, no, it's good. Um, what else? I don't know. There's a lot of them. I just can't even think of them from the top of my head. So bad. It's good. I don't know. I can't even like, I could probably make you a list, but it just won't come to my head right now. Yeah, the soundtrack to Suspiria is great. I love it. How do you feel about Elvis's music and his lasting effect on both morality and culture? I was actually thinking about this, I think like a day or two ago. I love Elvis. But I wouldn't blame him necessarily for the erosion of morality or culture. I would blame World War I and World War II for the erosion of morality and culture globally. Um, I think Elvis was a consequence, along with everything else, was just like a consequence of like 
losing touch with what people used to understand as the world, essentially. And we keep more and more losing touch with what it means to be human because this we're basically being submerged into a false reality. Have you seen Amadeus by Milo's Foreman? I have a couple of times. It was interesting. Any content creator inspirations from ASMR when you started? The first ASMR artist that I liked was Olivia Kisper. She was the one that got me into making ASMR. Then I started listening to Karuna Satori. Still to this day, love her content. Then, who else did I get into? Those were, two, those were the two that I really listened to a lot. Um, I liked soft ASMR as well. Um, and then random channels, just like random videos. So yeah. Are you a fan of George Carlin? Yes, very much so. George Carlin and I have pretty much the same opinions on everything, on every point, except that he lost his Catholic faith, which informed him in a more like anti-natalist way, which I understand. But because I regained faith, it's like I have the same viewpoints he does. I have the same criticisms he does. But my solutions are in a more pronatalist way where I'm like, life does mean something. We should stay alive. Life, life should have value to it. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Weren't you raised a Jehovah's Witness? Thought it was, thought it was that not an, thought it was that and not Protestantism. Um, Jehovah's Witnesses are a form of Protestantism. It's just it's further down the tree, where it's like, that's kind of what you get when you think that you can just break away from Christianity as the mainframe, where you're like, no, I have my criticisms of this. I'm going to create my own church then that church ends up having people who go, I have my criticisms. I'm going to create my own church. And then that church has people in it that goes, I have my criticisms. I'm going to create my own church. It, it ever, it just keeps splitting off to a point where you then get fringe religions like the Amish, the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Latter-day Saints. These are the ones where it's like relatively new, but established. Like they won't say religion because They'll just say it's like the truth, but they won't call themselves a religion. Like you're never allowed to say it's a religion as a Jehovah's Witness, but it is a sect objectively, like definitively it is a sect where it's basically like um, a far removed away denomination that has very exclusive principles to it, but it still is part of a mainstream religion, which is Christianity. Are you willing to talk about your extreme childhood upbringing? You've alluded and hinted, but left us curious. Um, I think in the grand scheme of things, my childhood, I wouldn't necessarily call it extreme just cause like, if you look at the world, like there's definitely some extreme childhoods present. I think that in comparison to perhaps American society, maybe I had like an extreme childhood comparable to like other severe Protestant faiths. Or denominations. Um, I might make a video once I gain more understanding of like Catholicism and orthodoxy, kind of breaking down my perspective on the Jehovah's Witnesses. Because although I do respect their faith in Christ, and I understand the benefits and the, the comfort that you receive from being kind of bubbled away from society, there is a lot of psychological damage that's done or told out because of the perfectionist standard that's kept within the witnesses and how excluded or exclusive they are away from society. Mm. Have you seen Twin Peaks? Loved it. What did you think about Bella's Afraid? Loved it. A lot of little details. I still liked Midsummer and Hereditary though. Bella's Bella's Afraid is not as is Wait, Bo's Afraid is not as good as the um, 
the other two. Favorite Tim Burton movie? Um, um, oh, I, I've seen like all of them. Mars Attacks, I think. Let's see. Do you have a Goodreads? I do. It's in my book club where we have like to be read books. And then I just kind of like put all the books that I've been reading as of late in the have read pile. Are you close with your family? Yes, we're very close. Celebrity crush. Oh, I have a lot of those. Um, but at the same time, I keep pruning them just because they do things or I find out things and I'm like, like Mike Nesmith, I had such a huge crush on him for like 10 years. And like, you can't help the fact that it's like, he's still an attractive man. But once I, I read about like a month or two ago, an article of his engagement with Winona Ryder. I just, I can't look at him the same way. It's just like, I can't, I'm disgusted. I'm just like, I can't, I can't. Um, but who's a celebrity crush? Eric Burden, I guess, from The Animals. Um, who else? That's about it, I guess, for now. Oh, it jumped and it froze. Oh, wait, no, it didn't freeze. going to re-upload that Christianity versus communism video anytime soon. I really like that video. I'll probably re-upload it on my third channel. Um, I still have to like move all those videos to my third channel. Um, it's just I've been working on like cultural essays on that channel that I've kind of been absor absorbed in. So it's like all of those videos that I made initially just feel kind of like limited for how deep my perspective keeps getting, but I'll probably move it over. Keeps jumping. Why was Christianity the first religion? If God was speaking in burning bushes, why do we know for a fact that polytheistic religions predate all forms of Christianity? Well, Christianity came from a polytheistic religion. Like Judaism used to be polytheistic. That's why the Jews were being punished for worshiping like Baal and Ishtar and like, um, Moloch and all of these different gods is because they had their value. They had their real presence within those societies. That's why they were worshipped by neighboring towns like Moab and Canaan and um, the whatevers. <laughs> and they essentially went down to um, Yahweh and they elected to only worship him because the positive results that came from worshiping Yahweh were undeniable. Um, and not only that, his worship also did not necessitate child, um, let's say endangerment perhaps. Um, and he frowned upon that to such a degree that that's why he told Abraham to go and quote unquote, endanger his son, because it was as a symbol of how he did not require that level of um, sacrifice that the other gods did. Um, that's why you have like portraits of like King Solomon. That's why it was so reprehensible and disgusting when he would say, do not have other gods before me because the other gods would require practices that were, or practices that were just disgusting and foul. Like, um, basically women selling themselves sexually or, um, them basically like ending the lives of children or babies, um, ritualistically. So consequently, the whole Abraham, um, Abraham Jacob story was essentially, or Abraham and Isaac story was essentially um, God saying, okay, you know, go off and sacrifice this only child that you have. And then him saying, no, this is not what I need. This is not what I asked for. This is never what I'm going to ask you for. So that was kind of like the symbol of it. It was basically to stand in contrast to the practices that other gods have and make it clear that in his own faith, that's not going to be required. And then he would say, do not have other gods before me because the other gods would require practices that were harmful to the human mind, to the human spirit. 
And that's how it got narrowed down to a monotheistic religion, which then came in the form of Christianity. But those other gods were real. Like they have real impacts. Like they would essentially, if you sacrificed um, a child to those gods, you would get wealth and prosperity and social acceptance and you would get capital from your town, basically. Um, but God didn't want that. That's why he always preached about um, moderation, modesty, basically being content with, you know, not having excess because excess will lead you to very like sinister ideas because you're basically ingratiating yourself to the material world which is possessed by only corrupted and evil energies and spirits okay. i do have a letterboxd account but i probably kind of lost it let's see oh it jumped okay thoughts on the rise of the trad movement versus the red pill degenerates pretty much that it's like <sighs> I think there's a lot of like red pill thoughts that still pull into the traditional idea where there's like a bunch of dudes who think still that there's a difference in body counts. No, well, you know, like a woman's body count is still like, you know, whatever. And I'm like, whatever your body count is, you should really expect to only date people with that same body count because you're going to have the same complexes, neuroses. You're going to have the same perspective on life. If you, as a man, have a high body count, and you try to go for a woman who has a low body count or is a virgin, you are not going to get her because she is going to know what your intentions are and she's going to know that you're not noble and she's going to know that she's at risk with you, whether it be for disease or whether it be for heartbreak. Because if a man can't commit at that point, then all of those quote unquote bodies that he has are basically from heartbroken women or from women that he's just used or from women who maybe even threw themselves at him and makes him look susceptible to that type of attention. So a girl's not going to want him for the same reasons that a man might not want a woman with a high body count for the same reasons, which is they're more susceptible to being, to going astray, whether it be because the relationship got boring, they couldn't deal with the emotional commitment. They couldn't deal with whatever. Um, so it, it's like, I don't know. It's kind of like the truth still permeates. It's like, you can't deny reality essentially. what was your favorite candy as a child hershey's i think i'd have to say hershey's but isn't that what other forms of christianity say that they are reforming the flaws of christianity which said they were reforming the flaws of other religions hold up they are reforming the flaws of Christianity, which said that they were reforming the laws of other... Well, they didn't reform the flaws of other religions. They basically completed a prophecy and then established Christianity, which was through Christ's resurrection. Then the denomination started to break apart because they had criticisms of X, Y, or Z. They started to remove, in the case of Martin Luther, they removed... Was it like 13 books from the Bible? And then the Bible itself says that if you remove any books that you're going to be feeling the consequences of having removed those books, naturally speaking. It's like, for example, if they remove the first five books of the Bible, you're going to lose like full understanding of what the entirety of the work even means. So if you lose, if you remove 13 books, we've lost understanding of what the deeper interpretations might mean or deeper understanding of our faith or whatever. Um, so it's like, you really have to kind of like climb the ladder and piece it all together essentially. Um, but yeah, as for like reforming the flaws of other religions, they didn't reform the flaws. They completed a prophecy that was like foretold. Let's see. Oh, I jumped again. Uh, Luther removed seven books. Oh, okay. Um, please. Let's see. Have you ever seen the film Fury? And if so, do you have any comments on the religious themes of the movie? I haven't watched the movie though. I think I had it recommended to me twice though. 
or you can just lie in your body count and nobody will find out. I mean, like, you could lie about your body count. First of all, I hate the term body count. It just sounds stupid. Um, but at the same time, if you lie about your body count and you're not being authentic with the person that you're with, that's going to build a level of mistrust from the gate that is never going to be able to truly feel like a profound relationship because you never understood if you never knew if they could actually accept you for as you are who you are and your past experiences and number two the consequences of your ex past is still going to bear on the relationship where if you do have a high body count it is going to be easier for you theoretically to break up with this person and not feel anything afterwards or at least seemingly not feel anything afterwards or to be more prone to as a woman liking the attention of other men and then maybe being swayed by the attention of other men or as a man being swayed by the body of another woman or being attracted to the body of another woman. Um, let's see. Okay. I think I'll probably, oh my God. I think I'm probably gonna end the stream now, but thank you guys for joining me. Um, I'm gonna leave the stream available for later for anyone who wants to watch up or catch up on it. Um, I'll probably do another stream for another milestone. I don't know if I'm gonna do it for the 75K or 100K, but yeah, um, thank you guys for joining me. And yeah, bye, take care. Oh no, uh, I couldn't finish my drawing. It's fine, I'll probably post a photo of it later. Okay, bye.